Hello and welcome to FPL Mates, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2022-23 season. My name is Dan and it's time for the Game Week 26 tier list video where we're going to rank some of the most popular transfers of the Game Week to see which players are absolutely must-buys and maybe which players we shouldn't be buying. So if you do enjoy this one guys, please do leave a like, please do subscribe if you're new around here. Without further ado guys, let's have a look at the tier list today. Alright guys, so I've got 30 players, the 30 most popular transfers in at time of recording. It's not going to include everyone that you guys are talking about, so feel free to leave a comment if one of the players that you're interested in have not been mentioned in this video. I'll be happy to reply to some comments there as well. Uh, we're going to go through all of these players now, starting with the least popular of the 30, all the way up to the number one transfer target of the game week, according to most FPL managers. So guys, let's start off with Jack Jack Grealish. So Jack Jack Grealish is going to go probably in a void. I feel like typically right now, Man City, the fact that we do have a blank game week in uh, in 28 for Grealish and Man City and we don't have a double game week in game week 29 I feel like we need to be moving away from Manchester City players just a little bit just because mostly there's also this this Champions League situation we're going to see rotation we've already seen loads of rotation it's just a difficult time for Man, Man City players at the moment and although Grealish has been fairly nailed on recently we know his ceiling isn't as high as some of the slightly more rotation risk midfielders I guess so not really feeling this one I'm going to put him as the first avoid of the video now controversially from what I just said there Erling Haaland is also a player who people are bringing back in and I feel like if you've already sold Erling Haaland is he a must buy back in it's difficult to say like I wouldn't want to be without him so I guess by default that makes him a must buy but if you've already sold him and you're only bringing him back in like you've got to kind of think what, what what was the reason why you sold him in the first place do you actually really want to bring him in is this something that you want to do does it fit with your strategy I don't know but certainly if you don't have Erling Haaland you could be in serious trouble if he does go off I know it's a difficult game against Newcastle but He's a top player. He's a top player who is scoring goals for fun still to this day, isn't he? Even against Bournemouth in 25. So I'm going to put him as a must-buy. I'm going to put Mo Salah here as an optional. Now, this could kind of change. Maybe up to a good transfer. Possibly even a great transfer if he does end up having a fixture against Fulham in game week 28. That is unconfirmed. We will find out in a couple of days' time uh, exactly what the situation is with Mo Salah and Liverpool. And whether they're going to have a blank in game week 28 or not. I think they are going to blank. It's more likely that they will blank, but you never know for sure. But anyway, I feel like let's put him somewhere around good transfer to optional because we don't know the full situation with him yet. And he is a nice premium player. And if he has a fixture in 28, you're not planning on free hitting then, then that's going to be a real advantage for those of you guys who have Salah. But I do feel like if you were going to get Salah, you probably should have got him in last game week. I know it's easy for me to say that now, but I think we're one game week late on Salah, really, if you did want to kind of take advantage of him because in general, he's very expensive. Um, uh, I'm not fully convinced. I'm going to put him actually down into optional, I think, because I I don't know. He's not an amazing pick for the value he is at the moment. I think he is a, a FBL asset of times gone by, maybe. Right, next player I'm going to put in is Zhao Felix, who I'm actually going to put in great transfer. Once again, he looked good against Spurs, and I think Chelsea in general looked very good in the first half against Spurs just yesterday. So I feel like there's still a, lo a lot to like about Zhao Felix. If anyone's going to get attacking returns from this Chelsea team, it does seem like it's going to be him. We also like the fact that Chelsea not only have a fixture in game week 28, but they also have a double game week fixture in game week 29 so you've got a player who doesn't blank and doubles so if you're worried about having uh, enough players to sort yourself out then maybe Jao Felix can be someone who comes in and, and does the job for you but I'm going to just pump put him down slightly maybe to good transfer we're probably going to edit this a little bit as we go through but for now I think he's somewhere between these two categories let's put him in good transfer for now we'll see how everything is lining up uh, next up Riyad Mahrez I guess he's optional you know we know he's got a high ceiling don't we so if he is playing, he is going to be scoring points. But what we've seen recently is him being rested in the Premier League. We kind of had a good idea that this was going to start to happen, didn't we, really? Because, obviously, there's this whole situation where... Champions League is Mares League, really. And any time the Champions League football is on, Mares just disappears from the Premier League a little bit. But he's had two rests in the Premier League now. Maybe he's going to come back into this um, this uh, this Premier League team against Newcastle. It's a pretty difficult game. It's a must-win game for Manchester City, indeed. So, you know, maybe the best players need to play. And therefore, I'm going to put him in optional. Uh, Darwin Nunez, I think, is an avoid. I just feel like there's so many better forwards to go for right now. I feel like we're not fully sure on his fitness right now. There is going to be a little bit rotation coming in when the likes of uh well obviously Jota is back now Firmino is back now we're going to see Luis Diaz back very soon as well and Darwin you know for 8.8 .8 million when there's so many other 
can be really good forwards to go for at the moment. I just don't feel like there's a place for Darwin Nunez in our teams. Now, maybe that changes slightly if we do end up getting a fixture in game week 28 for Liverpool. And if you already have Darwin, I don't know if he's an automatic sell, but I don't like this fixture against Manchester United right away. And I feel like he could be a bit of a trap player uh, in the next few game weeks. You know, we've already maybe seen him being a little bit of a trap player for game week 25. Not really where I want to go personally. Um, Saliba is okay. I think he's a, a you know a decent-ish transfer if you want to go in on an Arsenal defender. He's probably not the one I would be going for right now, but still, there is there's definitely merit in going in on Arsenal's defence at the moment. Another team with a fixture in 28, which is very nice. Uh, Fabian Scher is now the right time to buy him when he's about to play Manchester City. I would say no. Uh, pretty expensive defender, uh, and he's obviously playing a, a, the toughest game of the season. You would probably say an away fixture against Man City is not particularly a good time to buy any defender when you're about to have that fixture. So. I understand people want to get back involved in the Newcastle defence. I would just be waiting a little while before going for some of those Newcastle players, I think. Uh, anyway, next up, we have got David De Gea. Not really sure why the, where the David De Gea love is coming from. Like, fair enough. He uh, obviously does have a double game week in 29, but blanks in 28. Uh, I think I would much rather be going, if I'm going to get a goalkeeper right now... I'm probably going to go for a Brighton goalkeeper, a Brentford goalkeeper, much uh, much before I go for a De Gea. So for that for that reason, I feel like he goes into the avoid category. Just not really the goalkeeper pick I would be going for right now. Don't even think he's a particularly bad goalkeeper to have. But game against Liverpool, Liverpool decent in attack. Uh, and then, you know, blank in a couple of weeks. No double in 27. I don't know. I'm not feeling in this one. Uh, Erdegaard, I think he's a fine transfer indeed. If you still want to go in on him. Obviously, another player with that nice game week 28 fixture. So that could be pretty decent for Arsenal. Um, I, yeah, I feel like he's arguably a great transfer. Maybe somewhere between good and great. Just, just, just a player that you want to be having, I think. You know, decent pick. Let's put him in there next to Jao Felix. Uh, Danny Ings, I think it's an interesting differential, actually. If you want to go on, on West Ham... Um, um, West Ham kind of picking up a little bit. Maybe we're seeing a little bit of positivity from West Ham at the moment. Uh, maybe they can come back and actually do the business. And maybe Danny Ings is going to be a big part of that. We know how good Danny Ings can be when he's regularly playing, scoring those goals, where, when he's the focal point in those attacks. So, look, it, it's an interesting differential. I'm not saying he's a great transfer or anything like that. But, hey, I'm kind of interested in this one. Uh, Zinchenko, I think, is a great transfer. I feel like he's a really, really good option, particularly for those of you guys without a free hit. If you're looking for an Arsenal triple up right now, I think Enketia has dropped out now. Uh, we've seen him rotated in game week 25. We're probably going to see Gabriel Jesus back very, very soon. So I feel like the move from, you know, uh, whether you've got uh, an Enketia or maybe a Martinelli or whoever else you've got for Arsenal right now, I feel like Zinchenko is now that third Arsenal man. You know, alongside Saka and Erdegaard, right? So I'm going to put him in great transfer. I really like this one. Uh, Phil Foden, I'm going to put him in a void. Uh, I, I feel like... We're not ready to be hurt yet, again. I, I don't want to be hurt yet from Phil Foden. I'm not ready. I need to, to wait until next season, forget about all of the pain that Foden has caused this season, and then go in on Foden again and get hurt again. So I'm not ready to be hurt again. If you guys are, fair enough. But for me, he's an absolute avoid. Like, the rotation at City is just a madness at the moment. So I'm not sure I fully trust Foden, despite his good score in Game Week 25. Emerson, I think, is another interesting differential to go for. And I never fully trust Spurs in defence, but they have been lining up slightly more defensively recently with uh, Davies on the left wing back position and Emerson on the right wing back position. Obviously, there's always that worry about Porro coming in because Porro, why was he signed? He wasn't signed for Spurs to not play. So maybe he's going to take Emerson's place at some point. But Emerson seems to be that inevitable guy at Spurs that he just always seems to get a game no matter what. So look, if he gets regular game time and Spurs can continue to be quite defensively sound, I actually think he could end up being a good pick. There is possibility for Spurs to get a double game week in game week 29 as well, which could be really, really interesting. That'll be against Everton and Southampton, I believe. So if that happens, then suddenly Emerson is going to come into conversation a little bit. But yeah, I think he's optional. I think, you know, if you want to go there, fair enough, go there. Uh, and Bumo, again, another interesting differential. I feel like he has played quite well recently. And with Brentford getting two double game weeks over the next four, it's definitely interesting to go in some Brentford players. Uh, definitely. But is he the optimal forward to get? No, he's not. Are there some other forwards that we would perhaps rather go for? I think so. We do have the benefit of the double game week. We do have the benefit of the, the cheap price that Mbumo provides, which does make him optional, but he's certainly not optimal. Optional, but not optimal, I think, is uh, the way I go there. Uh, Martinelli is a difficult one. I guess he's an optional, but because he's, like, risky, isn't he? 
I think we'll all probably agree that he's kind of a risky player to go for right now. Is he going to be nailed on again? I don't know. When Jesus comes back, is he now, is that going to again be another player for him to be contending with because then we'll have uh, Erdegaard and Saka will be nailed on and then the last two positions will be between uh, Inketia, Gabriel Jesus, Martinelli and Trossard. So it's going to be a really difficult situation um, when we do get Jesus back and maybe Trossard is, is taking some minutes on the left wing. So just something to be aware of but at the same time if you already have Martinelli I would be more more optimistic than I was before, certainly. Now, Almiron, I'm going to put straight in as a bad transfer. I'm not sure why people are buying him at all. He's plays against Man City away next, and he has also been pretty poor in attack recently. His attacking numbers are down so, so much. Don't have a clue why people are going for Almiron right now. He's just a straight-up avoid, despite his popularity. Bit of a weird one, really. Uh, Trippier, I'm going to actually put in optional. I'm not... I'm not quite ready to put him in a void. I feel like Trippier, because of his creativity, and, you know, there's always a chance of a clean sheet, isn't there? Um, even if it is the toughest game in literally the entire season, if you are a defender, Trippier, he's just so goated this season that it's difficult to ever say that he's in a void, right? So uh, I certainly learned my lesson of maybe calling him in a void once or twice previously in the season when he's had tough fixtures, so I'm not going to do that again. We're going to put him in optional, but look, if I didn't have Trippier right now, this would not be the week I would be rushing to get him back in. I would probably be prioritising other transfers before that. Uh, but that's not to say he's not a player who we should be avoiding completely, certainly. Uh, anyway, Harry Kane, I think, is a great transfer, which I know is going to be such a shame for a lot of people um, who have recently sold Harry Kane in order to get the likes of Salah or Darwin or whoever else. Yeah, Kane is just a good player to have right now. Two good fixtures over the next two game weeks. Um, we've got Wolves, uh, obviously, next. That's a possible even captaincy for Kane, uh, if I'm totally honest. You really could captain him in this game, considering there's not too many really obvious players to captain this week. With uh, Haaland playing against Newcastle, Rashford playing against Liverpool, maybe Kane against Wolves is actually your answer. And then, again, like I said earlier, there's this potential for a really nice double game week for Spurs in game week 29. So, although he doesn't have a game week 28 fixture... In and around that, I feel like he could actually do quite well there. Uh, next up, we've got Saka, who uh, I guess has to go in a great transfer. You know, we can't really knock Saka. He's been doing pretty well. Blanked in the first game in game week 25. Let's see what he does in the second game. But I still think he could, uh, you know, claw it back. He's on those penalties. He's playing well, creative. Kind of unlucky to not get a penalty in that game, uh, uh, in game week 25 already. So, hey, you never know. Against Leicester, could have had a penalty. Let's see what happens next, I guess. Uh, March, I think, yeah, good transfer. His numbers are, are actually pretty decent at the moment. So we're going to put him in good transfer. Game week 27, double. Game week 29, double. And they're good doubles as well. So that's something that we really, really do like from Brighton. We do want to be going in on some Brighton players, certainly. And I think March... It's actually been doing, his, his numbers over the last couple of games have actually been better than Mitama. So, an interesting one there that maybe some of you guys um, haven't really considered. I don't know. I think Mitama is kind of the fan favourite, isn't he? But March over the last couple of games is showing a little bit more form, I think. Uh, Raya, the next player, a uh, goalkeeper from Brentford. I like this pick a lot. If I had, had to have a choice of any goalkeeper in the world right now, I would be going for Raya. Is he a priority transfer for you? Depends who your goalkeeper is right now. If you've got a nailed on goalkeeper already, who you're happy with, then maybe Raya is not your guy. But I think if you are making a goalkeeper transfer, he would definitely be the guy I'd go for. So I'm going to put him in good transfer because obviously it's difficult to say a goalkeeper is a great transfer, isn't it? But certainly free hitters in game week 28 or if you've got a second playing goalkeeper in game week 28, maybe there is scope to try and get Raya into your team at some point in the near future. Um, Luke Shaw you could potentially go for. I'm not sure if I'd fancy him against Liverpool straight away, but still a decent pick uh, to be moving forward with. He's a, he's a player that you probably do want to have in your team. Is now the right time to buy him? Not at 100% sure. I'm going to put Mitama next to uh, March here. Don't really know who to put ahead at the moment because it does seem like March and Mitama kind of are like constantly switching places as, as to which one is the better option. If I'm going to be totally honest with you guys, I would not be going for either ahead of Mac Allister. So if, if I'm to go for a Brighton midfielder right now, I would be going for Mac Allister and I would even bob Mac Allister into the great transfer category, um, possibly even the must buy category because I really am that confident in that pick. Uh, but certainly right now, you kind of, you're kind of between March and Mitama. Um, maybe we can even bump them both up to great transfers because we are going to want to get involved in the Brighton kind of, uh, well, it's going to be midfielders really, uh, I would say. Uh, maybe a bit on defence, maybe a bit on attack. But yeah, I, I like these guys. I like these guys. I think you could go for them now. 
Uh, I don't think you need to wait necessarily, uh, but certainly by next game week, we need to be making sure we've got some of those guys. Uh, Bruno Fernandes, going to put him in good transfer. Still think he's a pretty decent pick to have. I'd quite like to have him back, to be honest, but I don't know if that's going to be totally possible for me. Um, but yeah, I, I prefer him to Salah right now. I think the only kind of difference is because Bruno is guaranteed to not play. Well, not guaranteed. Nothing's ever guaranteed. But uh, he's not going to be playing in game week 28. Maybe that puts some people off. But, you know, he's got double game week in 29. Um, you know, I fancy Manchester United against the Liverpool defence right now. Yeah, it's, I feel like he's a player that you guys are going to want to have. Uh, ben Mee, I guess we'll put him... Good transfer alongside Rea. Uh, I still think uh, there is opportunity to go for Rico Henry or Ethan Pinnock, who are quite a little bit cheaper than, the, than me and actually slightly better underlying numbers than me as well and cheaper. So it makes it seem like, you know, those guys are obviously the players you should go for. But I know some people like the security of me, the fact that he's already got FPL points, the fact that, you know, he's been playing all season when Pinnock obviously uh, didn't really start playing for, for Brentford until around game week 10. He's been playing consistently 90 minutes every game since then but I know that's not good enough for a lot of people I know people look at Ben Mee as someone who's you know got attacking returns so far this season even though Pinnock's numbers are good you know me has actually delivered which I know people uh, have, get, a lot, get a lot of confidence in that they, they prefer to go for things that have already happened rather than trying to speculate so I do totally understand that that point of view I personally would rather go for Ethan Pinnock if I'm going to go for a Brentford defender the fact that he's 4.4 million saving 0.6 million for uh, what is actually a slightly better FPL asset even on bonus points as well um, if you take away you know bonus points you get when you get attacking returns uh, the baseline bonus that we call it uh, Ethan Pinnock is, is the slightly better pick so look I've said that again. It, it, this is always the case. Like people go for March, Mitama, and me. Uh, I will go for um, McAllister and Pinnock. It's not because I'm trying to be different. It's because the, the underlying numbers suggest that these players are going to score more in the future rather than just going on things that have happened in the past. I know past is an indicator of future, but past points aren't always the best kind of metric in my opinion. Now, one player from the likes of Brighton and Brentford I do really like is Estupinian. And I think I have to put him up in the great transfer category with those two double game weeks in the next four. As long as you can cover him for game week 28, where it's very unlikely he's going to get a fixture, I feel like he could be a, an absolute Donny, an absolute incredible sign-in. So I would maybe even put him higher than Saka potentially there. Uh, it would be somewhere around here though. Uh, yeah, really good transfer. Really like him. Don't think he's a must-buy uh, because I know different people are going to have different strategies. I mean, for me personally, I've got Lewis Dunk. So I don't think I'll be making that sideways move or even bringing along Estepinian next to him. But certainly I recognize that Estepinian would be a great player to have right now. Uh, Watkins, I think, is also a great pick as well in really good form at the moment. I don't know if he's necessarily going to keep up with his current numbers, but he's doing very well. He doesn't blank in 28. So again, those of you guys who are not free hitting in 28, you can go for Watkins. You have a fixture from him in game week 28, and then you have the advantage of a double game week in 29. So there are a few teams who do have a fixture in 28 and then double in 29. And these players are going to be absolutely invaluable to those of you guys who are not uh, who are not using a free hit anytime soon or have already used their free hit. I know probably about half of you guys have already used your free hit and that's absolutely fine. And a player like Watkin is really going to be your friend in a situation like that. So I'm going to put him in great transfer. All right, next up, we have actually got Marcus Rashford as a second to last player. I'm going to put him number one. I'm going to put him as the number one must buy. I feel like he is at this moment the best FPL asset in the entire game. Uh, the fact that he's a midfielder, the fact that he's so cheap, the fact that he is in such good form, one of the best players in world football at the moment on current form, which is really mad to say. Uh, better form than Erling Haaland, you would say. Cheaper. It's, uh, it seems like a no-brainer to, to get him back into your team, particularly if you are free hitting in game week 28 and you can cover Rashford for that blank because he's got a double in 29. He's got Liverpool next. You know, Rashford up against Trent Alexander-Arnold. You feel like that there could be a little bit of damage done there uh, against Liverpool. I would just love to have him and I would even consider him a real captaincy option. I know a lot of guys sold him. Uh, a lot of you guys did sell him because he blanked in game week 25. I understand why why you would do that because you don't want to have blanking players, but he is going to be one of those players that you crucially do need to get back in. And finally, we have got Tony, another player who is going to be a real friend of those of you guys who are planning free hits in game week 28 because uh, he's pretty much going to be your captain option in game week 27, I think. He's going to be one of the top captain picks um, with, the, with that double game week in 27. 
uh, yeah, it, it, he looks good. Is he, is, he, is he above Kane? Probably right now. He'd probably be above Kane. Yeah, um, we've spoken a little bit over the last couple of weeks about when the right time is, is to buy Tony. It's now. It's now. Uh, you know, after now that blank for Brentford is in the past, it is time to go in on Brentford and on Brighton. And Tony is probably going to be your number one pick from those teams, really. So, yeah, Tony pretty much uh, going to be an essential player. I can't really imagine life without Tony. Um, to be honest, uh, certainly a, a front three of Erling Haaland, Tony, Kane, maybe Watkins in there instead of Kane if you are worried about blanks as well. Jao Felix maybe comes in there as an outside pun. And I think that's why the likes of Darwin Nunez, it's just it's just kind of so out of favour right now. Why I wouldn't be looking to take a pun on Mbumo, maybe not a Danny Ings either, because there are some really nice forward options at the moment. And you can see quite a lot of forwards quite high on this tier list who I really would like to own. You can't own them all, unfortunately. We can only have three. So yeah, Erling Haaland's always going to be there. I think Tony is probably the second most priority forward to have right now. So that's why he is going to go in great transfer. And of course, we are with the must-buy category. As always, we are reserving it for the best of the best, Rashford and Erling Haaland. So yes, guys, if you are looking to make transfers this week, I would be looking at the top end of this tier list. The higher the player is, the more likely I'll be looking to get those in. Rashford, Haaland, if you don't have them, get them in. Tony is definitely a player you want to be looking at. If not now, definitely by next game week. If you don't have him by game week 27, it's going to be really, really tough. Uh, Harry Kane would be a good player to get back in. Uh, Saka, Estepinha, Watkins, Inchenko, and those Brighton guys as well. So, yeah, loads of really good options for us to go for this week. I know it's not going to be a huge week for making transfers, but I do still think there are some really, really nice picks to go for, particularly those players that you did remove for game week 27. 25, you may need to bring them back in because they're good players at the end of the day and we want to have good players in our team. So there we go. That is going to be the tier list. Like I say, if there's other players that I haven't covered in today's video, please do let me know and uh, I'll try and reply to some comments uh, about that. And, and just let me know what you feel about the tier list. Do you think anyone should be slightly higher, slightly lower on this one? Always good to get your opinions on this one. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you did enjoy, please do leave a like. Uh, massively appreciated. Please do subscribe if you're new around here as well. We've got loads of videos coming up. We've got wildcard templates. We've got, we're going to have a strategy, guys, as well, especially when we get a better idea of the blanks and uh, the doubles. Uh, we're going to get a much better idea at the by the end of this week. So we're going to give you some different chip strategies that you can use depending on what your current setup is. So, yeah, there we go, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully to see you on the, uh, the next video, which will be tomorrow. And uh, I'll see you later, mates. Bye-bye.